All right, thankfully, our power has had enough energy to meet the demand during this cold snap, but there is the lingering question of how best to increase your, our grid's capacity to meet population growth and increasing demands from technology like artificial intelligence. And the Public Utility Commission of Texas recently published a report recommending Texas expand its use of nuclear energy. KPRC2 Investigates has been looking at what that would look like, and these, Robert Honor is joining us now to explain. Yeah, before I move forward, though, I want, to talk, I want everybody to see what we're talking about size-wise. So this is a graphic from the Idaho National Laboratory, and this is a traditional nuclear energy plant. That's kind of the image that a lot of people have in their mind when they hear the terms nuclear energy, that and the big domed structures. But what Texas is looking at is this, a small modular reactor, much smaller than the traditional nuclear energy plant. And to better understand this technology and how it could possibly plug into our grid, we visited our neighbors at Texas A&M. People have this image in their head of the big dome, the big concrete domes, all of that. That's not what we're talking about here, is it? Yeah, so we're talking about small modular reactors or SMRs. These large domes are typically kind of gigawatt facilities, right? Thousands of megawatts that are in one site. When we talk about a small modular reactor, you're talking about a piece of a reactor which is designed to provide maybe a tenth of that energy. A tenth of the energy, hopefully a tenth of the cost to kind of get something off the ground. We're talking about creating little islands of power yep. to, to power specific areas. Yes, islands of power, almost comparable in size to, you know, a gas plant and smaller. So how does A&M fit into that? Being an early adopter, uh, facilitate this next generation of uh, nuclear power. So you want to build one here, correct? More than one. What we're looking to do is to site multiple different technologies of small modular reactors on our Rallis campus. There are more than a couple companies, two or three we'll say, that are kind of at the phase where they're ready to submit to the INRC, but they need a place to present uh, where they can have an off-taker, where somebody's using the electricity, where they can be integrated into a commercial market that has demand, right? Um, so you want to be that guinea pig? We want to be that guinea pig. And these Aggies are already knee-deep into researching the various technologies that make up small modular reactors. They took us through a lab that, through partnerships with several energy companies, is studying how smaller reactors will work, from differently designed control rods and spacing to so-called pebble bed reactors. There's even a mock control room to practice running running one of these facilities and test out how it handles emergencies like an earthquake. A lot of people think, you know, hear the term nuclear and it's kind of a scary term to them. Sure. So technology today and what has developed over the past decades is different than uh, the technology of kind of the China meltdown scenario in the you know 70s that, uh, right. that we had movies about. What the current designs focus on is what's called walk away safe. And what that means is I can walk away from the reactor, ignore it, and it will be safe. It's designed to operate with, if there's a power outage, if there's a water outage. It's very different than the reactor designs that people are used to. And the PUC says a project close to getting off the ground is the Energy X company's plan to build small modular reactors at the Dow Chemical Plant in Sea Drift, which is about two and a half hours southwest of Houston. The PUC said construction could start next year, but the Nuclear Regulatory Commission hasn't given final approval yet. Robert Arnold, KPRC 2 News.